Hello, I'm Kamal Basra. It's a beautiful day, and I'd like to welcome you to the Sophia Wealth Academy virtual sessions. We've put together an amazing lineup of speakers that will inform and inspire you, and also give you some real life tools to make your life easier. Today's topic is Boundaries 101, which is very key to our survival. But before we get to today's speaker, there are a couple of housekeeping details that I'd like to go over. Um, there's a chat box that's located on the bottom. If you click on that and change the settings to all panelists and attendees, you can type in if you have any technical difficulties and we'll do our best to assist you. The presentation will run about one hour and it'll be followed by a question and answer session. For the question and answer session, please use the Q&A button that's located on the bottom of your screen. And if you can type in your questions, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, Sony will do the best to answer all of them. And one final note, the session is being recorded uh, because of the high demand and the links will be sent out via email afterwards. If you have difficulty with the view, on the top right hand corner of your um, screen, you can switch to gallery view and that'll allow you to see the screen better. And with that, let's get started. I've known Sony for many years now. She's helped me on my own grief journey when my husband passed away. I respect, trust, and adore her. Sony Barron works as a psychotherapist, divorce coach, family constellation facilitator, and a shamanic practitioner. She has a master's degree in education and a master's degree in counseling psychology with extensive experience in helping people through anxiety, depression, divorce, and loss. She lives in Victoria, BC, and sees people internationally facilitating change and healing. You can visit her website at barroncounseling.com. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to Sony Barron. Thank you, Kamal. Hi, everybody. And thank you so much for taking this Saturday morning to be in circle with us. I'm really, really honored and I look forward to um, share what I can around the important topic of boundaries with you. So as we begin, I invited you uh, to safely have a candle if you have one. Uh, we're going to light it together in order to open our circle together. And so here we go, if I can get this to work. It's a little bit like lighting off the torch. Okay, so Dedicating this next hour and a bit together as a beautiful circle that will hold us all in learning, in heart, in harmony. Let's begin. Boundaries are everything. They keep things out and they keep things in. They create order in a really healthy way. So they are absolutely part of our existence. And if you just look at the most obvious example is our skin. We all have a boundary around our internal bodies through our skin. And, but boundaries are not just physical. They are really in every area of our lives. So I'd like to begin with looking at our inner boundaries first, because everything begins from inside. And from there, I would like to expand upwards to social and spiritual boundaries. So the first thing we're going to look at today is how to create healthy boundaries between the emotional um, mind and the mental mind, because I find that the two of them get constantly mixed up and they cause unnecessary grief for a lot of people. So um, when I talk about inner boundaries, I really mean separating our thoughts from our emotions. We have two kinds of thoughts. We have rational thoughts, logical thoughts that 
come from the head and they have a beginning and they have an end result. So for example, uh, two plus two is something that the mind is really good at figuring out and we have an answer, it's four. We have emotional thoughts. They originate from the heart and they have no end and they really typically don't even have a beginning. So the rational thoughts are very linear, they're very logical, and they solve problems. They have an end result. The emotional thoughts go round and round and round in your head, driving you crazy. They have no resolution. I'm sure you've all experienced that at some point. Now, what is an emotion? Emotion is really an energy, an energy in the body. And you know, when we feel an energy, if it's a wonderful energy that we get uh, joyous from, we, we, we just expand and we laugh and we jump and we, you know, we have a good time. But if we feel it, we feel the, in, the, in the body, we feel lighter. It's the same when we have heavier emotions, the uncomfortable emotions. Some people call them negative emotions. And they feel tense. If, the, if you just pay attention to your body, when you feel anxious or angry or panicky or scared, you get constricted. Everything tightens up. And when we, are not, when we don't allow the energy to flow and move as energy is designed to do, those emotions get stuck in the body and they look for a place to go because it's their nature. It's really like electricity. It must move. Energy must move. And energy also changes shape. It never dies. It just changes shape. And when we don't allow it to move it when it's still in the emotional body, it morphs into thought. It goes into our head and then it becomes thought. Thoughts are energy too. So, it's the same energy looking for a way out, but once it's in the head, my goodness, it really does get stuck and it goes round and around and around. And the head really can't help with emotions because the mind does not understand emotions. Why? Because emotions have no logic. Emotions are not attached to a time. They have no past. They have no future. And they also have no meaning. So what is the poor mind going to make out of it? They can't, the mind can't, it just can't. It can't control it. It doesn't know this kind of language of the emotion. So it gets exhausted. And then we get so tired and we wonder why we have no energy. And we wonder why our head is just going around and around and around driving us crazy. It's because it's a foreign language that's moved into your mind. Now, obviously, the more we try to deal with the emotions, the more the mind, the brain, tries to deal with the emotions through the head, the more exhausted you get. It really is like a dog chasing his tail. So what do we do? In order to create order, and in order to create space inside, we must create a healthy boundary between the logical thoughts and between what I call emotional thoughts. So what do we do? Typically, many people, when they get these uncomfortable emotions that constricts the body, they want to get rid of it. I want to get rid of it. It's so uncomfortable. Go away. It hurts. It, nobody likes to be rejected, including your emotion. Your emotion is alive. It's, it's, it's there to tell you something. And how does it feel when you say, go away, I don't like you? It hurts. So what it does, it yells louder. So you get more anxious because all of these emotions are your body's language to tell you something that matters, something that is important. It comes from a place of caring. It comes from within you, okay? So rather than trying to understand it through the mind and control it, which you can't, rather than pushing it away, rather than doing everything that you have always possibly been doing with your emotion, I'm going to propose something different right now. 
I'm going to ask you to begin to see, to begin to accept, to take your emotions as they are, to remove the judgment of the burner completely because the emotion is not good or bad. It simply is energy that is manifesting in your body to give you a message. So they want your attention. This emotion wants your attention. So um, here is a tool for you. I'm going to give you lots of tools through this talk. And this is the first one. When you feel an uncomfortable emotion in your body, such as anxiety, for example, very, very common. I invite you to allow it actually, rather than try to push it away because it's going to just get stronger. Allow the emotion to be. Allow it, hear it, acknowledge it, give it space within you. And when this emotion feels that you hear it, when she feels, I'm going to say she, when it feels heard and validated and even thanked, thank you, I, I hear you, it will move on its own because it's energy, remember. It will move on its own and you get relief. Now, the biggest emotion that is behind almost all of these heavy, uncomfortable emotion is, you guess it, fear. Fear is the number one emotion that tends to hijack us. It really is. It just grabs us by the scruff of the neck and it holds tight. And fear is, um, it's really, if you can just imagine that energy of fear as a being in its own right, it has desires, it has feelings, it has agendas, it has, um, uh, yeah, wishes, will. And especially now around COVID, I mean, there's just fear everywhere. It tends to basically take over everything. And it, it puts us into a fight or flight, like, my gosh, if, if, you know, I need to do something. But of course, it goes to the head. And then you start to have all these thoughts. What if, what will happen? And on and on and on. So we need to understand the nature of fear in order to learn to separate ourselves from the strong, powerful energy of fear. Fear is very, very useful. I mean, we, you know, fear, we have fear for a reason. We have all of these emotions. We evolved with them. So it's there to really protect you. It's there to save your life when you need it. When there's a real threat, if you've got a, a saber tooth tiger right here trying to eat you, you better be afraid so you can either run away or you can you know, attack it or something, right? But it, it will save your life. However, we no longer live in the time of the dinosaurs or saber tooth tigers. And today in modern times, Fear is not real. I mean, it feels real, but it's not because it's mostly a projection to the future. Okay. It, it, it lives in a fiction world where we make up scenarios of the worst thing that will happen and we get ourselves all tied up in knots and the fear now has its way with us. It literally hijacks us. So now when you understand that and really take that in, the future that becomes this reality in your mind has yet to exist. It's not even, it's not here. And we really have no idea how it will unfold. And the past that you know you may have based your fears on from before, it does not exist anymore either. So where are we? We are right now in the now, that's all we have, that's all we know. 
And that's the only sure thing that we can work with. So boundaries, to put, to put yourself in that perspective, in that um, the perception that actually reflects the accuracy of what is really happening in your world, okay? It means to create a boundary with the fear. So how do we do it? I'm gonna give you a new tool. You feel when you become aware and in tune how your body responds, you will feel the fear coming up. You will feel the anxiety. It's like it's bubbling up, it's bubbling up, it's bubbling up, right? Whenever you get activated, your stomach will start to clench possibly, your breathing will start to get you know, shallow. Um, all the classic symptoms of, oh my God, something horrible is gonna happen here. So your best tool, number one, is your awareness. Start, start to build awareness about what is happening in your body. We are not really walking around in the world as floating heads, even though it seems that way sometimes. We actually, these floating heads are attached to a body. So begin to build your awareness about what is happening in most of you. What is happening in your bodies? So the moment you become aware of the fear or anxiety bubbling up, Imagine now that there are real bubbles inside. And what do we do with bubbles? We blow them away. So you get, allow these bubbles to come up and start getting busy blowing them. Like, goodbye, thank you. It didn't come to hurt you, remember? It's one of our protective mechanism, but it got overexcited and we don't want it to be overexcited. We want to be in charge, which is our right. So begin to blow bubbles, literally blow bubbles. Bu bu say it five times, blow bubbles. Take, go get yourself a bubble blowing wand to practice. And just imagine that's what you're doing. Now here's the trick. You have a two second window to get those bubbles out of your system before they cross the barrier here and move into your head because then you've got a whole deeper, more difficult scenario to deal with. So blow the bubbles into space. And once they evaporate, once they actually go, take a minute and be kind, be kind to yourself. To this person who a minute ago really had a suffering moment. Her heart or his heart was beating. It was scary. What do we do when someone is scared? We are kind, aren't we? So be kind. Be kind for being afraid. It's okay. No judgment. Please, no judgment. The judgment is the most fragmenting. I don't even think it's a feeling. It's a, it's a thought um, that you can have to fragment you into many pieces and to disconnect you from the higher source. So get in the habit of blowing bubbles. Catch the fear before it gets to your thoughts. Now I can hear your question. What if I miss the two second window? Oh my God, what if I miss it? Okay. The fear snuck in. This is now when you take your emotional thinking mind on a picnic. So that's another tool I'm teaching you. And that's, a, that's one that may take a little bit more time than blowing bubbles, but it's effective and we're going to do it together. So I would like you right now to Imagine some of you are visual, some of you are um, more auditory. Do whatever, whichever way. If you draw, then just get your pen and draw. And so imagine that you are, you take your picnic basket with a beautiful blanket and you go to a beautiful grassy meadow 
and there may be a beautiful tree there or you know flowers whatever your meadow looks like is what your meadow looks like now i would like you to say to the thinking mind thank you so much for working so hard for me probably my whole life i really really appreciate it like thank you and i see that you're exhausted and I see that you really, really could use some rest. So let me spread this blanket. And let me now allow you this space to just rest and chill for a while. I am not going to be far. In fact, I'm going to be sitting on the same blanket with you. So I am safe because just taking time out for a moment all of this fear and anxiety all comes remember from a caring place there's part of you the caring part of you that really takes care of you once you're safe and that's why the fear comes up okay the fear has long forgotten it it's just in the business of being afraid but you and i know why it's there okay back to the picnic blanket rest the mind the thinking mind that is um adopting the emotions as if they are thoughts so we will call it the emotional mind actually so rest the emotional thinking mind on the blanket make her comfortable or him and pour the tea get out the picnic and just make it as the most loving, beautiful space to hang out and chill together. And then just take a breath. Your mind, your emotional mind is now quiet because it's resting on the blanket. And all of a sudden, you can now hear the wind, the breeze, the birds the insects. You can hear yourself. You have opened up space to be in the environment that you are in with no filters of fear getting in the way. What a blessing, what a gift to give yourself, isn't it? So when your mind, when your emotional mind is quiet, the peace you have inside is priceless. And you can really only make healthy decisions from a quiet emotional mind. So I would right now encourage you to practice going on a picnic whenever you need a really good rest inside, okay? And as you lie, and just do it with me right now, there is your emotional mind lying down. She is, she's content or he is content. Lie down next to this resting being. Put your hands on your heart and enjoy the stillness inside. Feel how good it feels in your body. Feels every part of your nervous system calming down. And you can get there on your own, anytime. You feel that the fear is getting too overly enthusiastic and tries to hijack you. You blow the bubbles if you can. Send that fear energy to source. Send it home. And or you go on a picnic. So I hope this works for you. I want to move on to talk a little bit about choices. Um, so 
health so because choices are another really important aspect of boundary that also have to do with uh, fear healthy choices come from values values that are connected to your higher consciousness and those values are you values of self-worth of generosity of basically valuing yourself when you value yourself you also are open to valuing the world from that same lens of generosity of everything has a right to exist all of these higher values that we aspire to as, as people now there is a myth here about choice making a lot of people feel that the choice that they make is between a or b that's not the case actually the choices that you make are between your higher consciousness which are the values i was just talking about or your lower consciousness which is the ego and the fear okay. so the un healthy choices will come uh, from fear that is linked to personal or social expectations typically um, and for example um, if you make a fear-based choice about your finances you hardwire your brain you hardwire your consciousness rather to fear okay and then you're likely to choose this fearful route of choice making again and again and again because that's what you are feeding that's what you're hardwiring your consciousness to the opposite is also true when you choose from your values such as again valuing yourself your self-worth uh, kindness generosity gratitude all of these things that keep us connected to source you likewise hardwire your consciousness to your values and those values will now guide your choices in the future as well so what i'm saying is that your choices our choices actually create our destiny they actually create our life and our destiny depends on the ability to create boundaries around our choices. Okay, so remember boundaries is, is being able to separate what is in our service, what is useful and what is not. So each time that we choose, we create a step, the next step in our path. when we choose from a place of value we connect to our higher consciousness and we disconnect from fear when we live from a place of higher consciousness we are then open to lying on our picnic blanket hearing the birds feeling one with a breeze feeling one with the soil under us and we also can be available to receive can be open to receive the love that's always available to everyone only if we allow ourselves to open up and receive it okay when we choose from a place of fear we connect to our lower consciousness to our ego and we disconnect from the higher self and all we have is chatter and we never can access maybe shouldn't say never but we we have a harder time accessing the universal love that's available to us to appreciate nature all around us that is so therapeutic and so beautiful so the principle is that what we feed grows 
And if you feed your values, beginning with valuing you, your self-worth, you are creating a very different life for yourself than if you were to feed your fear. I think you're getting it. So making healthy choices about making healthy choices now just to sum it up is really about saying no to your lower fearful part of you and saying yes to your higher self and i think that is really what we aspire we aspire to live from a higher place don't we so by making this separation we are creating empowerment for ourselves rather than more fear, which is incredibly disempowering. Okay, um, if you have any questions about that, write it down, write your questions down. There will be a, quest a time for um, questions later on, but I'm just gonna move on. So the next piece that I would like to look at with you together is the social boundaries. The reason I start with the inner boundaries first is because they guide our other boundaries. Because it's really important to understand that when we have very porous or non-existent boundaries between our emotions and our logical thoughts, between our fear and our higher self, then we also, it all spills out into every area of our lives, into all of your relationships. We, we are not able to say no. We're not able to to value our own self-worth and our own uh, birthright to hold space, good space and solid space, okay, on this earth, in this life. So that would be the foundation. I always go down, begin with the foundation, which is to build the ability to create order inside, okay, to really build that awareness about what works for you for your highest good and what doesn't and then what to do about it so now social boundaries they're all about the ability to set limits um, in regards to physical or sexual needs in regards to using your time uh, with others in a way that serves serves you first yes we'll go to that we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit um and in regards to money and possessions what to share what to talk about with who and so on and also in regards to expressing your feelings with others because it's not like it's appropriate to express everything with everybody, is it? So basically, it is the ability to say no. Dr. Judith Orloff likes to say that no is a complete sentence, and I love that because it really means, I hear you, but what you're saying or proposing doesn't work for me, so I'm not in, thank you so much, okay? Um, basically getting comfortable with saying no i want to be really clear saying no does not make you selfish or egotistical or narcissistic a lot of people come to me and they say oh but i can't think of myself first i can't value myself above other people because I, that's so selfish I know that many of us are taught that, especially women. So let's just take a really big eraser right now and erase that comment off our inner screen because it has absolutely no bearing to truth here. 
it's not egotistical to say no when it is in alignment, when it is congruent with your boundary setting. And remember the boundary setting is the choice that you make to serve and connect to your higher consciousness. It's healthy. Nobody is going to look after you the way you look after yourself. That's a fact. Nobody can look after you, look after you internal emotional process. It's not possible because it's not theirs. It's yours. Own it. It's yours and it's unique and it's beautiful and it's human and it's all good. Saying no is part of taking care of you. Okay. Just the fact that some of you think, oh, but then it makes me really selfish and it's really bad. Just that fact alone tells you that you are not selfish because truly narcissistic people don't have that ability to reflect on that. Okay, so we can really take that eraser and erase that sentence right off your screen. Now, the other part that's so important to be able to say a clear no is when you say yes, somebody is asking you something and every part of your body says, oh God, I really don't feel like it. This is blah, 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 blah. But you say yes, because you have to be polite and you have to think of others before you think yourself and all these old lessons that the eraser is not taken care of. You say yes, but you really mean no. What's happening here? Number one, you are completely abandoning yourself. And the part of you inside that says, hey, wait a minute. I don't want to do this. Why are you saying yes? You don't care about me. You are abandoning me. That really hurts. That really does hurt. Go inside. Apologize. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't. I'm so sorry. I love you. Please forgive me. I'm going to take this to heart. And next time, I'm going to listen. And when I don't want to do something with every fiber of my body, probably for a very good reason, I'm actually going to own it and going to say thank you, but no. Okay. The other piece is people can tell. People can tell when you say yes, but every part of you basically is like, oh God, I really don't want to do it. You think people don't know? So what happens? Nobody will believe you yeses and nobody will believe you noes anymore. You're not credible. You've lost your credibility. So, you know, do what you can to give yourself permission to say no, to be authentic with you, to honor, honor yourself inside, all of you. Now, in order to um, be congruent and be in alignment and saying no from a, a real um, connected place, what it means is you really need to shift your attention from out there to in here. Okay. So it means listening, listening in and honoring. Okay. And when you listen in and actually start to build this relationship with your body. You live in your body, you know, not in your head. You will always get the right answer because the body will always give it to you as it is. The body does not lie. The head does. We tell ourselves stories galore, but most of them are not, not the emotional ones, right? I'm not talking about the logical thoughts. I'm talking about the emotional thoughts are not credible. Listen in, listen to your body, 
bring your attention from focusing on someone out there. Oh, but what will they think and how will they feel and how will they react and what will happen and on and on and on. None of it is in your control anyway, because it's up to them according to their perception, according to their life experience, according to their opinion and their process. You have nothing to do with it. You have no control over it. Leave it with them and bring your attention in, inside. So it's, it's shifting where your attention goes that will allow you to be solid there for you and listen and say, hey, this does not serve. I'm going to say no now. We're going to practice it now. I asked you to, um, in an email, to bring a teddy bear. Mm, I love her. Um, or a doll or any other object that will represent someone uh, in your family or if your family is elsewhere, then maybe a close friend or somebody that you can, um, that you have a good relationship with. This person is going to now ask you to come over for Thanksgiving dinner. And what's happening is that you learn that this person, maybe it's your mom, your sister, your brother, your father, your best friend, I'm not sure who it is, you know, um, this person who is inviting you to the Thanksgiving dinner, turns out is inviting 20 other people from everywhere. You don't know them. You have nothing in common with them. There's COVID around. We know that. So it's not that you have to be absolutely scared, but you know, we want to use common sense. We want to be comfortable. You need to be comfortable. That's what supports, you know, am I comfortable with this? Is my attention over here? and my body is getting really uncomfortable, now what am I gonna do? So, here I am. I'm going to be that relative or friend who is now inviting you to dinner. And your job, and I don't care, your job is to say no, and I'm gonna push you really hard, and I'm gonna say really nasty things, and you're still gonna say no. And as you are saying no, I want you to tune into your body, please. I invite you. Listen, how is your body responding? Are you getting really tight? Is it really easy for you to just say, no, I'm sorry, this doesn't work for me. I'm not coming. And just hold on to it. No, thank you, but I'm not coming. Okay. Are you just finally feeling that I'm just, I have nothing left. I'm going to just say, yes, okay. Thank you for the invitation. I'll be there. Pay attention to what happens inside. Okay. So um, we're having this, this Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, you know, all the trimmings, everything beautiful. I prepared and shopped and it took such a long time to get a really nice dinner happening. I would love for you to come. Would you please come? What do you mean you're not coming? How can you say no to me? I've worked so hard to get this happening. What's wrong with you? You have to come. My God, you're so selfish. You've always been so selfish. You never listen. You don't care. You never care. You just always care about yourself. Look at you. I really, really, I'm so upset with you right now. I don't even know if I ever talk to you again. All I'm doing is I'm just asking you to come for a Thanksgiving dinner. Like, come on.
I give up. I don't know. You will hear about this again. This is not the end of it. I don't even know if I can ever talk to you again. I'm so insulted. <laughs> and what will all the other people say when they ask me, so where is, you know, what will I say? Oh, she just didn't want to come. She didn't feel like it. What am I going to say? Okay. Thank you, Teddy Bear. Release. You release her or him from the job. You're released. Write down your response. Write down what it felt like inside your body. What did it feel like to hold on to your no? Did you get tied up in knots? Was it easy? Was it challenging? And this was just a little game, but it does happen. Okay, it's good to have the notes and to remember what it felt like because if there is a challenge around saying no, such as you may feel really guilty or you don't have the right to say no because your attention is all on their well-being, okay, that's something to work on, isn't it? How do I need to balance, right? My own attention and self-caring for me with my, you know, caring nature. You know, it doesn't make you uncaring when you say no. It doesn't make you uncaring. It actually makes you incredibly caring for you. And when you think about it, if you go and you're all tight and upset, what kind of a time are you going to have? What kind of company would you be? So, you know, think of those values, right? When you make a choice of how to respond and what it means. I'm not saying you always have to say by any means. I'm not saying sometimes you do something that, you know, that is so important for somebody else. Um, that you know you kind of you weigh it out but if you can find a way to say yes while at the same time not giving up on your values then what you have done is actually aligned your values okay so for example my husband wants me to go to meet his i don't know his parents for example for something and um and I have a lot of other things to do, but I know that it really matters to him a lot and it's really not going to hurt me to go, right? Like it doesn't really compromise my own self value, then yeah, I'll go, of course. But if, if there's a situation where there's clearly a conflict within me, then I am going to choose from a higher value place. I'm going to connect with my higher consciousness as I make the choice, rather than from, I'm acting from guilt, anger, fear, all of those lower consciousness energy, okay? So I hope this was help helpful in some way. 
I hope that, you know, this was just a real stark, extreme kind of a, a situation, but those kind of situations do hold some teaching. And part of the teaching is um, the accountability. Accountability is another, um, another piece of the social boundaries. Who are you accountable for? Okay. So I would propose that um, you only job, okay, is to be accountable for yourself. And really understanding deep down inside that it is not your job, it is not your role to be emotionally, emotionally, not practically always, but emotionally responsible for other people or be accountable for their actions or choices. And I'm talking not your children, not your spouses, not your boss, not your parents, not your siblings, like not your dog, okay, cat. It is their life. It is their destiny. It is their existence. It is them and they're only you can only be accountable for yourself, okay? So if you find yourself making choices to say yes because you feel responsible for how someone may feel, imagine now that you know that, hey, it's their feeling. Who's accountable for their feelings? They are. Now that's a load off you, isn't it? So that's a really important boundary, okay? Accountability. And may be very clear about that, you know, every time you find yourself in this gray porous zone, your boundaries are not clear. So again, be aware, who am I acting on whose behalf here? My only job is to be accountable for me. And I'm going to give you an analogy of, of the closet. And I'm sure uh, some of my clients have heard that before. So bear with me again. So imagine that there's a house and everybody has a room and everyone has their own closet. But you know what? People are, they're busy. They're, they don't feel like it. It's too much trouble to take care of their closet. They take all their stuff and they dump it in your closet. You can't even find your pair of underwear in the morning. It's like shoes, nothing. It's just a mess, chaos. You can't, it's not sustainable. And they have nothing. Their closet is empty. There's nothing to create order with. It's like, hey, free, just free ride. So one day you say, I've had it, I'm done. You take all their stuff. This is yours, and this is yours, and this is yours, and this is yours. I really don't care what you do with it. You do have your own closet. If you want to use it, that's great. If you don't, not my problem. Now your closet is clear. You can find your shoes in the morning. It's this order there, okay? It's the same with emotions. It's the same principle with everything. It's not your job to keep other people's stuff in your closet. They have their own. I'm going to leave you with that. Start to create order. Okay. Um, the last... I'm just taking a look at the clock in your side. The last piece of... Um, boundary setting that I would like to address is the spiritual one. Energy is real. It's very real. Even though some of us may not believe it, okay, you're entitled to not believe it. Some of us are aware of it more than others. But we are, we live within an energetic field, 
and it is around us whether we see it whether we feel it or not and that's absolutely been my experience and i can vouch for many others as well now we want to be really discerning really discerning about what kind of energy we subject ourselves to excess anger hostility violence they all affect us negatively and i really don't recommend hanging around such environments if you can help it that includes the media especially today my gosh you turn on the news and what do you see i don't ever watch tv so i couldn't tell you but i can imagine that the images that come through the brain doesn't know the difference between what is on an image on a screen and what is happening in real time. So what it does is you're actually imprinting your consciousness with all this violence and fear and horrendous energy and it impacts you. It impacts you all the time. You move into fight or flight. Even if you don't know it, your body is responding and takes you for a ride. So be discerning. Um, places that hold a lot of pain and suffering like hospitals or pubs or bars, they can affect our energy too because we feel, we feel the energy that's around. And um, so the best boundary against negative environment is to hold a very strong intention of being solid and protected and to state that only those with good intention, only those of the light may enter your field. Okay. So your intention is going to draw good energy around you. Your best protection is actually to be grounded. Because when you're full in your body, you remember, you know who you are, okay? And, um, and so you know what your baseline is. Your baseline is feeling a certain way, thinking a certain way. And the moment it feels off, you have been compromised in some way. If it's yours, then you know what to do because we already did the bubbles and the picnic and all of these other things and we're gonna do grounding in a moment. But if it's not yours, then you, and you can tell because you know your baseline of how you are in the world, okay? Then you just release that energy out with a blessing of, with a prayer of blessing. So it actually becomes a really nice thing, but you don't keep it, you don't hold it, okay? Now, really important to not be too porous okay we don't want to be walking sponges because it's going to absolutely compromise your well-being so being grounded fully present powerful self full full of yourself is really healthy and so i'm going to guide you through this now and then we will end and open it up to questions so I would like you to, if you can, place both feet on the ground and close your eyes. And again, if you can imagine or hear or whatever sense you can use to allow you to get into uh, the space that I'm gonna lead you to now. Imagine that your spine is a trunk of a tree, a tree of your choice that is really healthy and beautiful and big. And feel that trunk along your spine. And allow the roots of this tree to come out from the tail, the, the base of your tailbone, along your legs, through your feet and into earth. And let those roots go deep and wide, casting a net underneath your feet in earth.
and send them deeper and wider as you are feeling connected to them. And when it feels right, like you have reached the right spot, anchor the roots in earth. And allow the energy of the earth, the nourishing, the grounding, the solid energy to travel up the roots and into your body and gather in your lower abdomen around uh, between the pubic bone and the belly button. So you feel solid, you feel heavy in a good way, in a physical way. Earth is holding you, supporting you, you are anchored and you are holding that energy of being full in your own grounding. And from the canopy above, which is really up shoulders and open above, your canopy is absorbing the life-giving light into your tree, down into your spine. So you are held by this light from above and you are supported by the earth from below. Notice how you feel in your body now that you are grounded Compared when you are mostly in your head, note the difference. Make that your landmark. Make that your default. Your spiritual boundaries mean you know who you are and who you are not. It means staying grounded in who you are, not leaking your energy out. All right. I would invite you to ground yourself as often as you can because that is being fully present in your body is honestly your best boundary and it's your best protection because nothing can enter a full space and it is your birthright in this life to be full of your own energy your own power. Your energy is your source of power. So to sum up, you are in charge, you are your own boss. It is within your right to say no when you need to, not feel obligated to say yes when it's against your values, honoring your higher consciousness. And this principle applies to the relationships that you have with yourself inside and the relationships that you have with everyone else. So I hope this was helpful. Um, this brings me to the end of my talk and now um, I'm going to stay, I'm going to open up to uh, taking some questions from you. Thank you very much, Sony. Um, that thanks, Thanksgiving exercise sounded like you were overhearing conversations with me and my family. <laughs> the words and the phrases were bang on. Um, and it's interesting uh, going through that and me sitting here answering your questions and answering your, your comebacks. 
I found, as I stayed with the no, I found that there was a peace that peacefulness that arose inside me. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, when you were saying, you know, what will people say if they don't see you there? I actually had compassion for that family member. Huh. And I was able to say, I know this might be, you might feel hurt, but I love you and I can't make it. How beautiful is that, come on, right? Yeah, how beautiful is that? So you see what gifts you actually get from allowing yourself to hold your value. Beautiful, thank you for taking us through that. So I see we've got a couple of questions and let's get to those. The first one is regarding that same exercise. And Rachel asks, when saying no as a full sentence, can we provide a reason or an explanation with it? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, often when we find that we need to be defensive, it's when we, um, when we are, the motivation behind it is for the other person to hear us and accept our reasoning. And I, typically find that, and it, it actually begins a dialogue that really goes down the rabbit hole. It doesn't go anywhere useful. So when you are solid behind, you know, from a place of valuing you and values, you really don't need to defend yourself. If it's just a politeness by saying, no, I just can't come, whatever, you know, it's up to you if you want to give a reason but um, be very aware of the motivation behind needing to give a reason. So if there's a motivation of, I really want them to hear me and agree and support my decision, not a good reason. Thank you. Does that answer the question? Perfect. Okay. Another question is, if you're a highly sensitive person, and some people call it being an empath, yep and you're constantly picking up other people's energies or energies in a room, yeah. that grounding can be challenging. So yes. how are, how, can you comment on that? Yeah, I work with a lot of empaths and empaths are literally walking sponges. Um, if you are one of these super sensitive people, there are probably quite a few of you out there, um, your job is to, um, to be extra mindful of your field. So it's almost like you're putting a mental fence around you, okay? And you can use the light, you can use an egg, you can, you know, keep it at a, at, a, at a distance and that distance can change. You are in charge of how much you change it. The grounding is, 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 um, is, is really an intention. So when you intend to be fully present, you, you actually can handle all those other energies with more power within and it makes it easier. So I would recommend practicing being fully in, being fully home, whether you do it through the grounding practice or any other way that you get there, you need to be home. This is, this is home, your body. And when you are in it, then you decide who comes in and who doesn't, like who gets your attention and who doesn't. And it does take practice. And um, people who are empathic, uh, like empaths or super extra sensitive people, it's actually their job to make sure that they stay home and keep it that way and not, um, not open themselves up to too much stimulation out there. I mean, even in a, you go shopping, you know, put a hoodie over you. So you're kind of in your bubble, you know, don't look in people's eyes when, when you have a conversation and you feel like somebody is sucking your energy, you can divert your eyes. You don't have to just look at them. So there are things that you could do. I mean, read, read, uh, just hang on for a second. I need longer arms. This is a fantastic book, The Empire Survival Guide. If you haven't seen it, go get it. Judith Orloff is wonderful. Great. Thank I hope you. That helps. Thank you. Um, 
how does what, what are some tools that a person can use because you can start off being grounded and come into you know your work day being very very grounded and it's kind of like uh, death by a thousand cuts where little things happen that <laughs> over the day or over the course of the day and before you know it you know your groundedness is no longer present so it is a practice that we need to to go back into it so you take uh, moments in during the day throughout the day to ground yourself take you know time for ourselves is so precious most of us don't ever value ourselves enough to say hey i need some time out right now i need to go on my picnic for a moment you know so it's up to remember who are you accountable for right so we are only accountable for ourselves our clients are not going to give us the space our kids are not going to give us the space they all want 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 from us so it's up to us to take that initiative and take time out periodically during the day take a bathroom break uh you know go out for a, a five minute walk take a you put your head down on your desk and close your eyes for five minutes it's recharging your batteries throughout the day. You need to do it. And why wait until you get exhausted and you know your resources are depleted? That is acting, you know, reacting rather than acting proactively and preventative. So that would be what I would do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Another question is, um, can you speak more specifically about how to release other people's energy that is coming at you? With a, with, a, with a blessing instead of letting it into yourself? That's actually a really big topic. <laughs> um, so the number one is actually to, to not make it possible for other people's energy to enter your body. You don't want other people's energy in your body and they can't enter your body if your body is full of your own energy. So that's why the grounding and being home is number one. Okay. If you're talking about, you know, just feeling you are picking up and this is again, for those people who are very sensitive, the first thing, if you're feeling an emotion that feels like, Oh, that's not my own default. That's not my, it's not congruent with my baseline. I always ask like, is it mine? Is it mine? And if it's not mine, then you, with your intention, you just, Say, I release you back with a prayer of blessing. And then you're done. So that is a very short answer to a very complex situation. But the bottom line is stay in your body. Stay home. Be full. Perfect. Thank you. I have a question from Joan. Um, and she asks, I find it difficult when others say yes, which is the path of least resistance. And I'm the only one who's saying no. How do I prepare for that? Peer pressure is tough, isn't it? And, you know, they don't teach us those things in school of how to have healthy boundaries. I wish they did. So it really is exactly everything that I just talked about is where do you place your values? And yes, it means that you may be the odd one out but who are you compromising the most and who are you being accountable for when you say yes, while well, you really want to say no. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll take one more question and then we've got some important information to pass along to the attendees. Um, this is an anonymous question and it's asking, I'm not sure what you mean when you say discerning. Could you please elaborate on that? um discerning around energies or i think it might be also when you were talking about what we let in when we let in right. violence and fear and, and oh yeah so discernment is really everything and and it, what it means is that you you tease it apart you you look at it and you say is this something that's going to be useful then i'm going to allow it and into, you know, I'm going to allow myself to entertain the invitation or um, 
um, be around this person if that person is positive influence or if it doesn't serve me like um, this person is a very angry person for example so by being discerning it's basically seeing the 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 benefits versus the, the advantages versus the disadvantages so it's basically um judging but not judging someone else or yourself but judging the situation is it helpful or is it not helpful is it something i want to spend time with or engage with or not can you check with her if that or that person if that answers yeah, I don't see a follow up, so I'm unfortunately not able to. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Discernment is really everything because it's, it's again, remember when we talked about values versus fear as well, that's discernment as well. So it's really telling, telling it, seeing it for what it is, and only taking what works. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you very much, Sonia. So, uh, Kamal, just before we end, I would like us to, because we started with a candle, I would like us to just all blow our candle with thanks. So gratitude and generosity to, ev to, to everyone and to everything is what keeps the bridge to our, our higher consciousness open. So with gratitude to all of you and thank you for being generous with your time and your space we end and close the circle for now. Thank you so much, Sony. All yours. Um, and uh, if the takeaways, a couple of takeaways are, is that within the first two seconds, let's blow the bubbles away. And if the bubbles don't go, then let's have a picnic with our thinking, emotional self. Um, beautiful, beautiful uh, metaphors that we can take away with us. Um, I wanted to mention our upcoming webinar, which is Transitioning Through Divorce. It is, um, the speaker that night is an amazing family lawyer, and she's going to be talking about some of the process of um, what divorce looks like, and that'll happen on October 21st at 6 p.m. Please sign up at sophiawealthacademy.com forward slash events to get your seat for that. And also, I wanted to thank everybody for joining us today for Sony's amazing uh, tools, tool set that she's leaving us with on, um, on boundaries. And um, there is a quick survey that's going to show up on your screen. If you wouldn't mind filling that out, that would be terrific. And with that, we'll say have a great weekend. Bye-bye.